Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Friends, welcome from wherever you are joining us from this day to our virtual Easter service for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. Today, we gather to remember and celebrate what the resurrection means for us as people of faith and what the resurrection means for us in our individual lives. We have journeyed this Lenten season and we have ended up here. So may you come into this time and place in joy and may God show up in unexpected ways for you this day. Will you join me in our call to worship? The words will be on your screen. Your responses are in bold. What are we to make of this day? When graves are opened, when the dead awaken, when life refuses to be contained. Then nothing is impossible. Hope is never extinguished and love is never conquered. Open our minds to believe what we cannot explain. Open our hearts to hope for what we cannot see. Open our lives to live and to love in the midst of death and despair. Let resurrection happen again in us today. Let us continue in song. Today, our Psalter lesson comes from Psalm 118. Hear now the word of God. 
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May God bless the hearers of this word. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. May God bless the hearers of this word. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Imagine with me for a moment the life cycle of a butterfly. It begins as a humble caterpillar crawling along the ground, limited in its movements and scope, but within that seemingly insignificant creature lies the potential for something truly miraculous. Do you think it knows how beautiful it will become? There's a story that goes like this. A man found a cocoon of a butterfly. One day, a small opening appeared in the side, and he sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to squeeze its body through the tiny hole. Then it stopped as if it could go no further. So the man, after watching all of this, decides to help the butterfly, and so he takes a pair of scissors and snips off the remaining bits of cat of cocoon. The butterfly easily emerges, but what comes out doesn't look like the butterfly he expects. The butterfly has a swollen body and these shriveled wings. And so the man continues to watch it, expecting that any minute the wings would enlarge and unfurl and expand enough to support the body, but neither happen. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around. It was never able to fly. What the man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required by the butterfly to get through that opening, as small as it seemed, That struggle was a way of forcing the fluid from its swollen body into the wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. In our lives, we often find ourselves confined by the limitations of our circumstances. We find ourselves struggling to break free from the cocoon of doubt and fear and uncertainty. But just as the caterpillar undergoes a metamorphosis, so too can we experience transformation in our lives. And this, this beloved is the core of what it means for us to travel along the Lenten journey. Over these past weeks in the season of Lent, we have been invited to wander the wilderness parts of our life, these places of hardship and grief and temptation and injustice and sorrow, to travel these places in honesty with God, to learn in those moments, to learn in our our going through, to trust in the foolish love that God offers to us along the way. This love of God is foolish, not because it is silly, but because it does not make sense within the confines and structures of the world. It is generous and abundant. And with this love, we are able to make our way out of the wilderness places into wholeness. Today, Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, this day calls us to pause and reflect on this journey that we have taken and to take a moment to witness the transformation that has occurred within us and around us. It invites us to celebrate the one who has gone with us along the way. And so knowing all of these things, we turn to our gospel passage today, and and it's probably the oddest of the accounts that we have to read about Jesus's resurrection. All the gospels talk about this moment. Each of the other gospels, though, share at least two pieces of of evidence as proof that Jesus has risen from the dead. They show us witnesses to the empty tomb and appearances of the risen Christ to multiple followers. But in Mark, the tomb is empty, 
apart from a mysterious messenger. But nobody gets to see Jesus. Nobody gets to touch the nail holes in his hands. There is no great commission given to the disciples like in Matthew. There is no recounting of the Hebrew scriptures or a meal shared with travelers to Emmaus like in the Gospel of Luke. There is no intimate conversation with Mary in the garden, nor the sudden arrival of the risen Christ behind locked doors like in the Gospel of John. Each of the other Gospels shares at least two pieces of evidence as proof Mark's good news requires no resurrection proofs. Nothing based on encounters between Jesus and his disciples. Instead, instead, the gospel of Mark gives us a promise. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he has told you. The two Marys and Salome go to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. They are expecting to care for his now decomposing form with the spices that they carry. And instead, they find the stone rolled away from the tomb and a young man in a white robe telling them that Jesus is risen and instructing them to go and tell the disciples, But in this account, the women leave the tomb afraid. Terror and amazement had seized them. But unlike the other Gospels, where the women are told that the resurrected Jesus is with you, Mark frames this account and has them be told, has us be told that the resurrected Jesus is going ahead of you. Because this is the promise. This is the hope of resurrection offered to us. There is nothing Jesus' followers will endure. No place that we can go that Jesus isn't already there. Our celebration today, this day we call Easter, today is not just a remembrance of a miraculous event from the past. More than anything, it is a celebration of the power of transformation, a a charge to live as people of resurrection. It means that no matter how confined we may feel by our circumstances, there is always hope for transformation. Just as the caterpillar surrenders itself to the process of metamorphosis, we too must surrender ourselves to God's transforming power, working in ways that don't make sense, that we don't understand. We must trust that God is working in our lives even when we cannot see it. We must have faith that the struggles we face are not the end of our story, but merely a chapter in the greater narrative of God's redemption and renewal. And like the butterfly, Emerging slowly from its cocoon, we must be willing to embrace the change, to let go of the old and embrace the new, to step out in faith through the narrow opening, to spread our wings. In our homes and our families, we now can live knowing that there is always hope and life, even after times of grief. Or conflict. In our church, in our community, we can gather together knowing that God's life is found together and that we are able to bring life to one another through the grace and love and care and compassion that we show one another. When we start to live as resurrection people, 
we, each and every one of us, recognize that we participate in resurrection in every moment, that we have the power to bring life to others, whether through caring for our environment, whether through working to alleviate poverty, whether it's serving those in need in front of us or around us or learning to understand other cultures and people, living more simply, living more peacefully in order to foster justice and equality and equity in our world. Resurrection. Resurrection then is a reality that we are called to live beyond this day, beyond this moment. We do not just receive resurrection life, but we become carriers of that same life to the world. This, beloved, is the gift. This day, if nothing else, (laughs) may we believe and embrace its power. May we be reminded of the transformative power of God's love at work, especially in the places we cannot see. May we, like the butterfly, emerge from the darkness into the light, transformed and renewed by the grace of God. May we trust in the promise of resurrection and live our lives as a testament to the hope that lies within us. Christ is risen, and this is only the beginning. serve a risen savior he's in the world today i know that he is living whatever false may say i see his hand of mercy i hear his voice of cheer and just the time i need him he's always near he lives he lives christ jesus lives today he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him. The help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. 
This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Christ is our peace. The indestructible peace we now share with each other and in the world. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Glory to God. Amen.